Masai. Woo! La Masai. And the under Mahaya. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Come on, throw your hands in the air and just brag on Jesus. Come on, throw your hands up and just brag on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey, hey, my sight. Be some my soul. Hey. Show. Show. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Glory. Glory. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. Hey. Glory. Masia. Tabaso. Jesus. 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 Hey. Do you want some more? Come on, just praise him. The more you praise him, the more he does. The longer you praise him, the stronger he gets. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Woo. Glory. Glory. Hey, 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 hey. Jesus. Jesus. Ho, ho, my city boho. Glory, 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 glory. Hey, la basai. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Hey, 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 hey. Jesus. Yeah, la boko. La mama si ataboho. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Father, we honor you. We worship you. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you praise him in the Holy Ghost for just a few moments? Just praise him in the Holy Spirit. Ela manda da boca de de bariki Ela anda da boca ri Anda la babo ri sabahaya Glory Jesus 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 Holy Ghost Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Jesus, Jesus. Father, we honor your presence. We honor your presence, Lord. Jesus, lay your hand on the one next to you and say, In the mighty name of the mighty Jesus, be healed. In the mighty name of the mighty Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed, be free, be delivered, be whole. Jesus, so I set you free in the mighty name of the mighty Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus, Jesus, 
Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Jesus. 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 Samama Siba so. Father, we honor you tonight. I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong in this house. Jesus, there's another level that we've moved into tonight. I can feel it. Breakthrough, breakthrough, Holy Ghost, breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough. Jesus, Jesus. Breakthrough. Show. Hey. I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong. I want you to be reseated, but you'll be back up in a moment. I'm telling you, something's going on tonight. I thought I would come in to see a bunch of people full of pumpkin pie and whipped cream and turkey and ham and just sitting there looking. You folks, something's going on. This church has moved into a new level of praise and worship. Everybody say breakthrough. Something's going on at Lighthouse. I'm telling you. I want you to look this direction. There are two verses. 1 Corinthians 16, 22, 23. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Everybody say, the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the message. 130 times. 130 times the title. The Lord Jesus Christ. Or Christ Jesus the Lord. Or Jesus Christ the Lord. To some, all it is is a salutation and a benediction. But the Lord Jesus Christ gave me a word for you tonight and told me to tell you this is his full title. And if you'll accept him for who he is, you can have what he says. Come on. Everybody say, the Lord Jesus Christ. A hundred and thirty times the three titles. To many, it's salutation or benediction. But to those of us that really know him, these three words, Lord Jesus Christ, describe master, mediator, Messiah. Describes his humanity, his divinity, his supremacy. You see, some, most of the world will accept him as the son of man, but not the son of God. We accept him as the son of God, but he's more than man. He's more than God. How many knows he's Lord? And so here's what he says. The champion apostle Paul, more than benediction, more than salutation. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be cut off at his coming. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Master, mediator, Messiah, as the son of man, Born of a woman, as the Son of God, begotten of God. As the Son of Man, he was hungry. As the Son of God, he said, I'm the bread of life. As the Son of Man, he was thirsty. As the Son of God, he said, I'm the water of life. As the Son of Man, he went to a wedding. That's what men do. As the Son of God, he turned the water to wine. As the Son of Man, he wept. So do we. As the Son of God, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And there was a resurrection miracle. As the Son of Man, he slept on a boat. As the Son of God, he arose and put the sea to sleep. As the Son of Man, he died. So do we. As the Son of God, he kicked the bottom of the grave, jumped up shouting, it's Easter. Easter is forever. How many knows he is the Lord Jesus Christ? Give him a hand of praise. Listen very carefully. He's not half man or half God. He's all man and he's all God. As much human as his mother, as much God as his father. By the way, we're moving into Christmas season. How many knows it's his birthday? How many knows it's all about him? 
And many of us will celebrate gifts. We'll talk about gifts. We'll talk about even revival, this gift and that gift and that dream and this vision and, and that spiritual gift and that thing and this. Th no, 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 folks. It's all about him. And God told me to tell you, when I shared with Pastor, all I said was you want to have Christmas revival. Simply stated as this. Most churches have cantatas. They have plays. They have Christmas pageants. Don't minimize any of that. But what would happen if we had a full-blown revival and God began to shine his glory on the Lord Jesus Christ and said, it's his birthday. Celebrate him. Come on. Give him a hand of praise. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for Christmas revival? Can you take it? Are you ready for the Holy Ghost to move and set people free from sin, Satan, sickness? Everybody else is having pageants, and they take you back to a little baby in a manger. Thank God for Christmas, but he's not a baby in a manger. Thank God for Calvary, but he's not a little weak man on a cross, on a picture, on a wall. How many knows he's the risen, conquering King of kings and Lord of lords? He's the Lord Jesus Christ. Give him praise. Now, if this ever hits you, it'll, it'll set you free because you see the revelation of who he is depends upon what you receive. Some, they'll accept him as a baby. Others, he's on a cross on a picture on a wall. And to some, he's the healer. And to some, he's the baptizer. But the Lord Jesus Christ, his humanity, that means he feels when I hurt because he was man. He is man. And the is, is divinity. He's son of God. He's able to do something about it. But more than that, he is Lord. In the Bible, he's the Lord of history, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of the Sabbath, the Lord of glory, the Lord of heaven and earth. But today, I want to make a confession. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is Lord over Barnstall. Jesus Christ is Lord over Oklahoma. Jesus Christ is Lord of the United States of America. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. Come on, give him praise. Now, this is important because you see the New Age rage literally wants to let you accept him along with Buddha, Hare Krishna, Muhammad, Sang Young Moon, and they're just all alike and they're all leaders of religions, but Buddha... Here, a Krishna Muhammad can never save a sin-sick soul. To do this, it'll take someone greater than Bud, Harry, and Moe. Come on, say amen, somebody. Are oh, you listening to me? The dream of Joseph Truth, Joseph Smith is not the truth, it's a myth. He's myth-informed and myth-led, and of all men, most miserable and dead. Shout amen, somebody. Buddha, Hera, Krishna, Muhammad are still dead in the grave. But Jesus Christ is risen in glory mighty to save. Yes, Jesus Christ is alive, his grace and glory to show. So get your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and forget Bud, Harry, and Moe. Can somebody say amen? He is different. He is unique. He is separated. He is supreme. Divinity, humanity, supremacy, master, mediator, Messiah. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your house will be saved. Some believe on Jesus. Some will accept him as Christ. Demons acknowledge he's the son of God. Hear me when I tell you, it's more than that. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's everything. He is all. I was nothing. I am nothing. Nothing plus nothing equals nothing. But this nobody met somebody who is everything. And nothing plus everything equals everything. I'm, I've got everything. I'm healing and fullness and freshness and freedom and deliverance. And my family's going to heaven with me. Why? Because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Give him a hand of praise. Now, here's what God told me. He said, now, tonight, after Thanksgiving, I want you to brag on my son. And as you just brag on my son, I want my people to worship him. I want my people to fall in love with him. I want my people to honor him and to obey him because when they submit to his divinity, his humanity, and his supremacy, I'm going to fill them with fullness. But I want a church that's built not around the gifts. Are you listening to me, folks? Because most birthdays, you think about it. You don't talk about, well, look at that gift and look at this gift. No, no, no. You look at the person we're celebrating. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. 
so we don't lift up evangelists or pastor or church or good feeling or hot flash or cold chill or falling or shaking. We don't lift up. No, no, no. We lift up him. It's all about him. It's Jesus in the morning and Jesus in the noontime and Jesus when the sun goes down. If I never feel another thing, I'm in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my everything. He is my all. Give him a hand of praise. And 10 days without any food, I said, Lord, give me the message for this message. Give me the message of the hour. What would you tell people? I was waiting because there were so many needs. I wanted to see miracles. I wanted to see signs and wonders. I wanted to see people get out of wheelchairs. I wanted to see the healing of dread diseases. But 10 days with no food and no television, at the end of that 10 days, here was the message. Tell my people if they want healing, don't seek healing, but seek the healer. Tell my people if they want a gift, don't seek a gift, but seek the giver. Tell my people if they want power, don't seek power, but seek the source of power. Tell my people if they want life, don't seek life, but seek the source of life. Tell my people if they want something, don't seek something, but seek someone. Tell my people he's the talk of heaven. He's the center of attention. He's the focus of our affection. He's the main attraction. If you'll make him the main attraction at Lighthouse, you'll have all the gifts. Are you ready? And I was sitting on the platform of Calvary Temple, Springfield, Missouri. A thousand people was out there, and the pastor proceeded to introduce me this way. We have a very special guest. He says, a very special guest is the world's greatest preacher. I thought, now, Billy Graham's first. I'm second. But he began to proceed. Our very special guest, he says, has touched millions of lives. And I thought, maybe thousands, but not millions. And he said, our very special guest is my best friend. I thought I hardly know this man. He concluded, our very special guest is the Lord Jesus Christ, and John's going to tell you all about him. Amen. And when I stumbled to the microphone, God said, and don't you ever forget it, and I haven't. And somewhere along the line, three months into the revival, as we go into his birthday celebration, God says, stop celebrating the gifts. Stop celebrating the tinsel. Stop selling all the beautiful array in the party. Get your mind on the things and thrills and theories and gifts and get your mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let's brag on him. Can you give him a hand of praise? Now, this is so simple, yet it's so profound. 130 times, the champion apostle Paul says, the Lord Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ our Lord, or Christ Jesus our Lord. And to many, it's just salutation benediction. But God says, no, this is his supremacy, his humanity, his divinity. This is who he is. And God said, tell my people, I want to fill them with the fullness of but they've got to accept him for who he is. He's not a weekend hobby. He's not a crutch or a club. He's not a little crying baby in a manger. He's not a little cross, a little man on a cross on a picture on a wall. He's not a mere memory in a Palestinian tomb. Um, he is conquering king of kings and lord of lords. Um, I'm not excited about the man in the White House. I'm excited about the man on the white horse. He's found in, in Revelation chapter 19. Um, he's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. We're moving into a Christmas revival. God's going to open the doors, and people's going to come in, and they're going to feel what you've been feeling the past few moments. I couldn't hardly get up here. Pastor, the glory was so heavy on him, we could have gone right through, and God would have healed everybody in this house without John Davis being here because it's not about an evangelist. It's not about John Davis. It's not about mere mortal man. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. He's here. He's alive. He reigns. Come on, give him a hand of praise. I want you to listen to me because we've got two altar calls most of the time. First time, you accept him as Savior. Then somewhere along the line, make him Lord of your life. That's not the way it's supposed to be. In fact, he's never really referred to as Savior and Lord. It's always Lord and Savior. Lord and Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Somewhere along the line in, in the mental... In, in the mental mentality of the, of the Western civilization, we want to somehow divide. And, you know, you can accept him as Savior and then one day as healer and one day as baptizer and, and today he's Savior, but down the road he'll be Lord. No, 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 folks. You accept him for who he is and he, you have what he says. Amen. The fullness. Everybody say the fullness. 
He is Lord and Savior. You don't accept him as Savior tonight and Lord tomorrow night. You receive him for who he is, the fullness. You don't pick and choose. He's everything. He's our all. I love the Gospel of John because John leans on his bosom. And John gives us a pictorial view of who he is. In John chapter 1, the Lamb of God, Son of God, Word of God, co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent with God. John chapter 2, the Son of Man, wedding of Cana of Galilee. He performed a miracle to keep the party going. John chapter 3, the divine teacher. And he tells Nicodemus, who comes at night. Everybody say Nick at night. Nick said, I don't understand. And Jesus said, I can't explain. But you've got to believe not just in God, but believe in me. John chapter 4, he's the soul winner. The woman comes with a water pot and she leaves with the well. Amen. And she tells everybody, I met a real man. I know I've been married to five, but I met a real man. Amen. John chapter 5, he's the great physician. I've got good news. When the doctor shakes his head, walks away from your bed, and says no remedy for your malady, there's no such thing as inoperable or incurable in the vocabulary of God. I know a great physician can walk into your life, set you free. He's the answer for cancer. Come on, give him praise. John chapter 6, he's the bread of life. Wonder bread, never stale. Say amen, somebody. John chapter 7, he's the water of life. Satisfaction guaranteed. John chapter 8, the defender of the weak. They catch the woman in the very act of adultery. They got rocks in their hand and rocks in their head. They want to have a rock concert. Amen. But Jesus said, no, I didn't come to condemn sin or condone sin. I came to forgive sin. If that's not true, would all be shoveling coal below? Aren't you glad that God forgave you of your sin and set you free from your sin? John chapter 9, he's the light of the world. John chapter 10, he is the good shepherd. Chapter 11, the resurrection of life. Chapter 12, he is the king. Chapter 13, the servant. Chapter 14, the great consoler. Chapter 15, the true vine. Chapter 16, he is the great giver of the Holy Ghost. Chapter 17, the intercessor. Chapter 18, the rejected Savior. Chapter 19, the crucified Savior. If our story ended there, all we would have is slow walking and some sad talking, a funeral dirge. We'd go to a tomb and say, here's Buddha, here's Hare Krishna, here's Muhammad, and here's Jesus. And most tombs are famous because of who's in it. But the one in Jerusalem is famous because of who's not in it. Alma knows the tomb is empty. I said the tomb is empty. He's not there. He's at Barnstall. Give him praise. Everybody say the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is so simple and yet it's so profound. When God really pulled my plug and said, okay, enough's enough. Don't brag on gifts. Don't brag on what I've done. Brag on who I am. If you will make me the center of attention, the focus of affection, and the main attraction. By the way, if you want to find me when you get to heaven, look for the best-looking man in heaven. Say amen, somebody. His name is Jesus. I'll be at his feet. Come on, say amen, somebody. If he's the talk of heaven and all of heaven revolves around him, everything comes out of heaven through him, everybody goes to heaven through him, what would happen if in Christmas it became not about a roly-poly jolly gentleman called St. Nick, not about the elves, not about the gifts, not about even the angels, not about that night. Oh, thank God for a holy night, but it's not a holy night. How many knows it's about the Lord Jesus Christ? He came, he lived, loved, labored, died, arose, ascended. He lives, loves, saves, cares, heals, feels, delivers, and he's coming again. But until then, he's going to shake Oklahoma with Holy Ghost revival. Come on, are you ready for him? Would you lift your hands and praise him? Would you open your mouth and just brag on him? Come on, just open your mouth and brag on him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, for 30 seconds, I want you to brag on him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, come on. 20 more seconds, would you brag on him? Hey, Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just brag on him. Just brag on him. Maribasori barakasaya. And this is real revival where you don't depend on a preacher, an evangelist. You don't depend on a worship team. You don't look to a pastor. 
You don't look to some kind of experience. You look to him, and all by himself, he's enough. What is it about revival that we so do enjoy it? It gets stronger and stronger. Then all of a sudden we focus on that feeling, on that gift, on our needs, on another level. I'm not against another level, but I'm going to tell you right now, a few moments ago, the Lord Jesus Christ was here in such a powerful way, touching you and healing you. What would happen if all of December, all of December, I'm not going to minimize pageants, but is anybody hungry for real Holy Ghost revival in December? Santa Claus has his revival. What would happen if we had ours? What would happen if it was bigger and greater? What would happen? A man walked by, and there was downtown, there was a manger scene. One man looked at the other and said, would you look at that? The church is even trying to horn in on Christmas. Amen. It's a sad and sorry sight. But somewhere along the line, Christmas has become about the lights, the glitter, the glitz, the glamour. Whatever happened to the glory? Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of Man. Humanity, divinity, supremacy. As man, he hurts when I hurt. He's touched with a feeling of my infirmity, but as God... He's able to jerk the devil out of your head, set you free. What would happen if God began to enshrine the clouds with his glory one more time? If he jacked open the heavens and said, Merry Christmas, and he saved your family. He saved your family. Every member of your family got saved, healed, filled, delivered. Come on, are you ready? Are you ready for real Christmas? Jesus Christ, the Lord. Christ, Jesus, the Lord. The Lord, Jesus Christ. And two men died on the same day. One of a broken neck, one of a broken heart. One in a hill, one in a valley. Close for three years, separated for eternity. Jesus and Judas. Heaven and hell. Life and death. Light and darkness. Judas sat where you sit. But he never called him Lord. Is he the Lord of your life? Lord is someone you obey. Are you ready to obey him a thousand percent? Lord is someone you worship. Now, a few moments ago, something happened in this atmosphere. I'm an evangelist. I don't look for a place. I look for the place. And when I sat there a few moments ago, I thought, wow, something's going on here. The presence. Everybody say the presence. The greatest present is his presence. What would happen if Christmas, all month long, it got stronger and stronger and stronger? And you looked and people started coming in Sunday morning and then Sunday night and Monday night. And they filled this place. And your family was saved and healed and filled. Here's what God's telling me. If you will make the Lord Jesus Christ... If you'll celebrate Jesus Christ as Lord, if you'll crown him as King of kings and Lord of lords, that means we don't have to pump or threaten or beg or plead. We don't have to work something up. We don't have to say, hey, you got to get here tomorrow night. Hey, you need to be here. Please don't. No, 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 folks. It's his birthday. Uninvited at his own birthday celebration. Let's look at the gifts. Well, we got this gift and that gift and this gift and that gift. And thank God for all the gifts. If they're from God, I want them. Amen. But it's not about any of the gifts. It's about the giver. And there he is. I said, there he is. God said he's the talk of heaven. Would you make him the talk of Barnstall? Would you make him the talk of Barnstall? Would you get excited just about him? Do you need a new thing? If it's new, it's not true. If it's true, it's not new. Come on, say amen, somebody. Oh, let me feel something. Preacher, preach a prophecy message. Preach the rise and fall of Adolf Hitler's mustache. Amen. Tell me something new. Tell me about the Middle East. Tell me what's going on. What would happen if we simply got excited about the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. There it is. Come on, there it is. Hey! Come on, there it is. It's him. He shows up. He shows off. And so here we are, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. We could pull it in for Atlanta and say, wow, what a run we've had, three months. But now we're talking about Christmas revival. Everybody say Christmas revival. You've seen some stuff, but how many still got family that needs to be saved? Lift your other hand and praise him right now. Don't even ask God to save him. Just praise him. Come on, lift your voice and praise him. Come on, lift your voice and praise him. Hey, Jesus. 
Jesus. Jesus. Come on, just praise him. Hola, Messiah. Hela mari masori banda kasaya. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Four days from tomorrow, five days, I will fly down to Pensacola, Florida. I will land in an airport that I used to fly in and out of for five years. I was telling my buddy Ralph about the meetings. One time, three revivals, a church of 3,000, the Prayer Palace, Canada. I was there two nights. Then the church in Washington, D.C., 1,400 people on Monday nights. Then the church in Hampton, Virginia, 3,000 people. I saw my wife once or twice a week, but I just stayed in that flow for seven months until we almost literally burn out. And I would fly in now that airport, and I will go back there. I'll go back there because it's divine assignment. When I left Pensacola, John Kilpatrick asked me to preach there nine times. I turned him down all nine times. It wasn't that I didn't want to preach there. It was just that was so sacred. It was more than good preaching. This was a sovereign visitation of God. How many ever went to Pensacola, Florida? So you know what I'm talking about? This was a sovereign move of God. I'm not into my preaching. I'm not into good services. This was more than good services. We've had good services all of our life. What would happen if God would seize a facility, jack the heavens open, and for days, hours, months, years, he would say, everybody that walks on this campus is going to be saved, healed, filled, delivered, set. Whoop, I just struck something there. Do you feel that? Do you, you feel that? Okay, now you understand. So this is sacred to John Davis. If good preaching could have done it, I'd memorize books of the Bible. I rattled it off. I could tell you who he is in every book of the Bible. I could quote books of the Bible to you tonight. I'm going to impress you. God said, make it simple. It's about him. I'm going to know it's all about him. It's his birthday. I said, it's his birthday. <laughs> he stands on the outside looking in saying, hey, would you let me come in? And behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's talking to the church. Read it. Revelation chapter 3, the last day church. He's on the outside looking in, knocking at the door. We talk that to the center. He's not talking to the center. He's talking to the church. He said, I, I like your pageant. I like your plays. I, I like your Christmas festivities. And he said, I like the good preaching. And he said, the singing's good. But he said, would you let me come in? If you'll open the door, I'll come in and I'll sup with you and you with me. What would happen? You see, I saw something in Pensacola. And I went down there, and I slayed on the floor, and you did too. It was awesome. In a few nights, I will go down to honor the man of God that God used. His name is Steve Hill. For the past years, he has fought cancer. He's fought the demon of cancer. I believe something significant is going to happen as we gather together. In fact, would you lift your hand and pray for the man of God tonight, Father? In the mighty name of the mighty Jesus, healing for Steve's body, <laughs> deliverance for his body. Healing, deliverance, healing, deliverance. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And for night after night, we saw him come in there. Pastor Kilpatrick's out traveling. Steve's there an hour before service, getting everything in line. He goes in. What a trooper. What a warrior. But the thing that impacted me about him was not his preaching. It was his love of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was in love with him. Nobody could say Jesus like Steve Hill said Jesus. And here's what the men of God said. If he's not the first thing on your mind the morning when you wake up and the last thing on your mind when you pillow your head at night, I doubt your relationship with God. I got into conviction. In the midst of it all, I fell in love with him. <laughs> And I stand before you tonight in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. What would happen if God did hear what he did in Pensacola? More than good preaching, more than great singing, more than good services. But God jacks the heavens open. And he said, so you're going to celebrate my son? I'm going to celebrate you. If you brag on my son, I'll save your son. If you lift up my son, I'll lift up yours. Amen. If you'll, come on, folks. I'm an old. If you'll bless him, he'll bless you. If you're drawn out of God, he'll draw out of you. Is anybody here excited about the Lord Jesus Christ? Come on, give him a hand of praise.
So this is my heart. I stand before you, nothing more, nothing else, nothing less. It's all about him. It's Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, and Jesus when the sun goes down. When you mention that name, tears will come out of Steve Hill's eyes. He loved him. And he didn't make statements like this. If you're not in love with him, I doubt your relationship with him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sunday. It's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. How many enjoyed Thanksgiving? What a time we had. How many still got unsafe family members? We all do. I thank God for everything that's going on here. But what would happen if December was the month that God said, I'm going to shower you with my glory, and because you love my son, I'm going to put out all the stops. I see him tonight. I see him in heaven. He's not standing somewhere in the shadows. He's high and lifted up, supreme, superior, superlative. He's Adam's creator, Abel's altar, Enid's companion, Noah's ark, Abraham's friend, Isaac's well, Jacob's ladder, Joseph's dream, Moses' burning bush, Gideon's fleece. He's Joshua's captain, Elijah's swing low, sweet chariot ride. He's Samuel's cruise of all and Hannah's cry. He's Balaam's Shiloh, John's pearly white city, Paul's handkerchief and Simon's shadow. He's Sharon's rose and Canaan's king. He is Daniel's deliverer and the three holy Hebrews' fourth man. He is God's son, Mary's baby, the angel his darling heavens, wonder, hell's terror. He's the way maker, peacemaker, caretaker, soul saver, devil chaser, dead man raiser, blind man healer, Holy Ghost filler, need meter, problem solver, prayer answer, gospel preaching, people reaching, grave busting, leper cleansing, mountain moving, prayer answering, barn stall revival that's going to explode in December. Are you ready? You're too quiet. Are you ready? Are you ready for more? Come on, give him a thunder salvation. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is our light for the night, our source for the course, our power for the hour, our way for the day, our friend to the end, our master in disaster. He's the king of everything. God said, son, they treat him so shabbily. They talk about new age, and they compare him with Joseph Smith and Buddha, how Krishna Muhammad, and they tell him that he's a way of many ways, and he's an historical figure, and he's a teacher, and he's a good leader. No, no, no. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. He is everything. I said he is supreme. My vocabulary fails me. Ladies and gentlemen, he's brighter than light, louder than sound. He is faster than speed. I'm older than time and better than good. Amen. He's sweeter than honey and richer than money. Ladies and gentlemen, he does it all. Nobody does it better in the morning, in the noontime, at night. Get ready for healings, miracles, fullness. The bottom is going to drop out of heaven. You ain't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. It's revival time. Come on, praise him. Jesus. And here's what the champion apostle Paul says. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be cut off at his coming. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. In 1987, 21 days with no food, no television, no fellowship with anybody but him. He walked into my basement, and when he walked in, my life was forever changed. He first walked into the library of my mind, and he said, Son, you want me to live in your house? I've got to be Lord. How many knows he's Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all? He said, The pornography has to go. The stuff you're watching on television, it grieves my spirit. I just hit a stump with somebody. Because I'm telling you right now, this revival is not about things and thrills and theories and gifts. It's about him. It's all about him. And I said, oh, Jesus. And I let him cleanse my mind, the library of my mind. And now, here's what I read. I read the book. I memorize the book. On the way over, while I was sleeping, I quoted two or three books of the Bible. It charges my battery. And when I'm not reading the book, I watch Little House on the Prairie or the Waltons, amen, or Andy Griffin. The junk has to go. Everybody say the junk has to go. Are you ready for Christmas revival? Anybody want more? You want more? Come on, folks. 
pastor preached it this morning. 100% obedience, instant obedience, complete obedience, holy, solely, throwly, totally, completely, head to heel up and down, through and through, hat, pocketbook, and shoe. How many wants all that he has? You got to accept all that he is. Come on, folks. He doesn't come to take sides. He comes to take over. Are you listening to me? Oh, Lord, would you take my problem? No, but I'll take your life. When I take your life, I get rid of your problems. God, take my cigarettes. God said, I don't smoke. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Oh, he'll set you free from nicotine. But it's more than being free. How many knows? He wants you to be filled with his glory. Are you listening to me? Anybody getting this message? The Lord Jesus Christ, he walked into the dining room, been of my appetites. He said, son, you think because you're a good preacher and you think because I'm blessing you that I'm pleased, I'm not. I want to be the total summation of everything that you are. And the rest of your life, I want to be the number one driving desire of your life. He walked into the recreation room of my house, and there are the pleasures. I love God, but many love pleasure more than they love God. How many of the Bible says that'll happen? That's why on Sunday people go to lakeside assembly, and they go to bedside assembly. Come on, and they baptize their boat. Come on, say amen, somebody. God says, I want to be Lord of your life. He walked into the living room of my fireplace when the fireplace had grown cold and there was smoke and gray ashes. And, and somewhere along the line, we learned how to do church. And boy, we talk about his goodness and his greatness and his gifts and what he does. What about just talking about who he is? What about just saying Jesus is Lord? And it's all about in a day when it was popular to shout Caesar is Lord. In fact, if you didn't say that, it was a crime. The champion apostle Paul said, the ultimate confession of all creation, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now, you don't add him to what you are. He is everything. You don't add revival to your schedule. That's what I appreciate about these pastors. Most places, they want a move of God if they can fit it in. We got a pageant here and we got a play here. And over here, we got this. And over here, we got this. And we're going to work God. You don't work God into nothing. How many knows? He don't take sides. He takes over. Are you ready for him to build his church? You know he can heal everybody in the house in one fell swoop. How many knows? He can fill this place with people. Are you ready? Are you ready? Give him a hand of praise. <laughs> As he walked into my house, 21 days with no food, Billy, you come to a place of complete surrender to him. I left my denomination. They didn't kick me out. I left them. Some of them still wonder where I went. I walked away from all the titles and all the perks. I fell in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, Lillian. When I fell in love with him, Don, all of a sudden, he meant more than anything. But he said, son, when I'm Lord, I have your worship, I have your obedience. He said, there's some clauses in your house you haven't opened up to me. Lord, those clauses are boarded up. And I haven't boarded up because it's, it stinks. You don't want skeletons. There's stuff I've done. He says, I know all about that. But he said, the blood will never cover what you don't uncover. If you'll open those doors, I'll come in, clean out all the skeletons. I'll turn on the lights. I said, Lord, there's a sister I haven't talked to in seven years. He said, I know that. He said, I'm going to heal that relationship because when I'm Lord, that means that there's nothing that you got anything against, nothing, nobody. I'm going to heal your relationships. I'm going to set you free. My God, I open the doors of all the closets. John Davis has no secrets. I told John Kilpatrick one day, I said, I'll tell you every sin I've ever done. He said, I don't have the time. Amen. Come on, shout amen to my. <laughs> Come on, folks. Don't try to impress God with your stained glass voice. He don't want a hand. God don't want a patty cake. God don't even want a nod. How many knows God wants your life? Lock, stock, and barrel, every nook and cranny, up and down, through and through, hat, pocket, book, and shoe, head to heel, spirit, soul, past, present, future, finances. Lord, give me some money. God said, I'll do that, but I want your life. Lord, heal my body. I'll do that, but I want your life. Lord, take my problems. I'll do that, but give me yourself. How many knows when you give him yourself, he accepts full responsibility for the life totally committed to him, totally committed to him. Ladies and gentlemen, after 21 days, 
I thought I was going to have a ministry of signs and wonders and miracles, but instead I had a ministry of just surrendering and submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I fell in love with him, and for four days I couldn't talk. I couldn't say a word. They thought John Davis has lost his voice. Has he lost his mind? I said, God, I'm unworthy to preach. I won't go in the ministry, but I'll be the best supporter that a pastor's ever had. I'll pay my tithe. I'll go to church, but I'm unworthy. After several days, God said, son, no, no, no. I don't want you to leave the ministry. I want you to recognize that I am holy. I want you to fear God. I want you to walk in reverence. I want you to magnify me. And I want you to just tell everybody that you see it's all about Jesus. It's all about his lordship. Tell my people to worship me. Folks, he wants worship tonight. Would you lift your hands and worship him all across this building? Would you lift your hands and worship him all across this building? Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and praise him. Lift your hands and praise him. I want you for 30 seconds to praise him. Don't ask him for a thing. Just praise him. Randa masori mandara basaya. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it, that's it. Your hands extended a type of surrender and a type of submission. I surrender all, all to Jesus. All to Jesus. Past, present, future, problems, relationships, obedience, worship, obedience, worship. He wants it all. For 15 more seconds, would you say, I love you, Jesus? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Just praise him. Glory, glory. Jesus, Jesus, something is going to happen. When I go down there Thursday and Friday, I'll connect with John Kirkpatrick. I'll connect with Paul Wetzel. I'll connect with Steve Hill. I'll reconnect. But something significant is going to happen. Because before John Kirkpatrick called me and asked me to come, God said, you need to go because this is the next step. Because here's what he told me when I left Pensacola. He said, you haven't seen it yet. It's in front of you. You ain't seen it yet. Well, I thought, dear God, I thought I'd seen everything. I'd never seen people line up to get in. God said, you haven't seen it yet. It's in front of you. What I'm getting ready to do is you don't have to fly to Florida to see. How many of you can come to Barnstall and see it? How many? Coming, coming to a city near you soon. Coming to a city near you soon. Before the trumpet sounds, there won't be a city in America where there will not be at least one church in the white heat of Holy Ghost Revival 24-7. Catherine Kuhlman said before Jesus comes, there's going to be a healing wave that's going to come across the body of Christ. And when the trumpet sounds, there won't be one sick saint left in the body of Christ. How many is ready for the fullness? And it's not about Steve Hill or John Kilpatrick or Pensacola. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. But John Davis is going to go down. And what I'm going to do is literally submit. They've got me a place saved. And I'm going to submit, and I'm going to lay on the floor, and I'm going to hug Steve Hill. I only, you know what he's been through. Another thing I want to do to him, I want to take an offering and submit to him and say, I bless you, men of God. There's something about giving. Everybody say giving. These two nights, tonight and tomorrow night, the seed you sow will help me go. Give him an offering from the Barnstar Revival. The Holy Spirit told me, if you want the anointing, you sow into the anointing, you serve under the anointing. Everybody say, sow into. Say, serve under. I did that for years. I've been gone now for years. Me and Debbie's coming out of the woods. There's something getting ready to explode. I feel it. I sense it. I know it. Could it be this is the place? Could it be that God's been leaving with you about more? Everybody knows there's more. Anybody want more? Have you had enough? How many wants more? A few moments ago, the glory was so heavy, I sat there and I thought, wow, Jesus, what are you saying? God said, the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell them it's the Lord Jesus Christ. There's coming a day when pastor can walk up and say, Jesus, and people's going to jump up all across the building. 
Kathy can just say, I love you, Jesus, and all of a sudden people's going to start applauding. And religion don't understand it. The world don't understand it, but they line up to get in. Why? Because there's somebody in the house. When I walk in, the hell leaves my head. The worry leaves. The depression is gone. Are you listening to me, folks? Come on. Now, this is the season to be jolly. And January is the season to pay for being jolly. Come on, say amen, somebody. And we spend money we don't have to buy things we don't need to impress people we don't like. And after all the glitz, the glitter, the glamour, here we got all the gifts. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? And families are still into it. What would happen if this season was different and God jacked the heavens open and saved everybody in your house? Are you ready for that? Okay, lift your hands and just praise him. Lift your voice and just praise him. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Jesus. 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 On Friday night, on Friday night, I believe Kathy and Becky's going. Is that right? I'll see you there. We'll make sure you get a seat. Ralph will make sure we get seats for you. It's going to be packed. I don't know. Anybody else going? How many has ever heard Steve Hill before? How many loves the man of God? Okay, I'm going to go down. You can't go. We're going down for you. I'm going down as the ambassador. I'm going down as the emissary. I'm going down representing the barn stall revival. Jesus. They'll say, barn what? I said, barn stall. Tulsa's a suburb, a barn stall, you know. I'll try to, you, you, you build it up, you know. I was trying to tell tourists today where it's at. I talk about it every Sunday morning. I had people from Norway there today. And they just look at you like a cow looking at a new gate. You know, where are you going? Barn stall. Got a driver coming. You know, and so they just look at, they don't understand revival. I thought everybody did, but they don't. We're a weird lot here at Barnstall. Come on, say amen. We don't fit in. We're earth misfits. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Because you've had three months and you want more. Anybody here want more? I'm looking at you. I didn't know you'd be here. I thought you'd be full of pumpkin pie and turkey. I thought you'd be laying at home. But you're here. The same people. I look at you. Here you are. I see you up here praising God. I see you worshiping. I see you work on the streets. And you won't let go. You won't back up. You won't turn back. And somewhere along the line, I'm saying, Lord, if pastor's going to go for this, I'm going to go for it. We're in this thing together. Let's go for broke. Let's, let's just say this is it. Everybody say this is it. Come on, folks. How many knows this could be the last Christmas between you and the rapture? You still believe the king is coming? You still believe our Lord is coming back to earth again? So I'll go down there and John Kilpatrick will try to get me to move back, you know, and he'll start talking about what he's doing. And, and where you at? I'm a barn stall. You're where? I'm a barn stall. Been there three months. And we're going to stay. We're going to have a Christmas revival. Oh, Christmas revival. Everybody dismisses for Christmas because you know that God don't move on Christmas. That's Santa Claus's revival. Santa Claus is the big, come on. You know what I'm saying, folks? It's the world. Look at that. The church is horned in on Christmas. <laughs> Amen. How many knows? It's all about him. It's all about him. What happened? His own birthday celebration. All we talk about is gifts. Why don't we talk about him? 2,000 years ago, God reached up in the four corners of infinity to call the glory of heaven and put in a baby. God didn't send an army to shake the world. He sent a baby. Amen. Merry Christmas. He came. How many knows he's coming again? But until then, what if he comes in fullness? What if he comes in fullness? Did you know a miracle a week of filling your house? What if? What if blind eyes are open, deaf ears are unstopped, the lame leap for joy? What if people come out of wheelchairs? What if? I'm a nose. All things are possible. I'm going for it, folks. Come on. Are you going for it? Lift your hands and praise him one more time. Jesus. 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 
When Ralph drove me here tonight, I got into the motel, checked in, laid down to rest, sleeping good. About 10 minutes into a sleep that would have lasted 30 minutes, that would have been a two-hour power nap. The phone rang, the front desk. Are you enjoying your room, Mr. Davis? I was. Until you call me and have me knows what I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know, we're back, and you're here, and we're all together. And tomorrow night, I call Monroe. He said, I wouldn't miss it for the world. He said, John, I'm bringing people because we're going to soak in the glory. There's another church that says, hey, it's his birthday. Let's go for it. Are you ready for a Merry Christmas revival? All I hear pastors saying is, do it, Lord. Everybody say, do it, Lord. Throw your hands up like it's a hold up and say, do it, Lord. Come on, young people. Come on, young people. Come on, mom and dad. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. 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 Here's what I want you to do. In a few moments, I'm going to give an altar call, and you're going to find yourself moving closer to God. Pastor preached a message this morning on obedience and the fear of the Lord. I said, right on. I'm telling you, folks, we don't need to be digging for donuts. We need Brussels sprouts. Come on, say amen, somebody. When you go to another level, you've got to make sure that you're ready. And God says, I want more than your, I want more than your problems. I want more than your needs. I want more than a Christmas list. How many knows God can meet everything on that list? God said, I want you to look at the center of attention, the main attraction. The focus for your affection, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's my message. The Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not going to divide him anymore. His supremacy, his sovereignty, his divinity, his humanity. He's more than mere mortal man. He's everything. In a few moments, I'm going to give an altar call. And you're going to raise your hand. And some of you don't even realize, but God's going to deal with you about some stuff in your life. Because Lord is someone you worship. And someone you obey, but right now, we're going to give an offering to take down to the man of God that's been wrestling with the demon of cancer, going through some stuff. I'm going to go down there and say, I bless you, man of God. This is from the Barnstall Revival. We bless you, Steve Hill. Only God knows what his needs are, but how many knows as we bless him, God's going to bless us. I want you right now just to reach for your checkbook. You're making a check. Make it John Davis Ministries. You can run it through Lighthouse if you want. We're going to receive an offering. Get it out of the way. This is going to help me. God told me, he said, son, don't go empty-handed. I want you to take a check. If you can't go, you can send your support and say, Steve Hill, we bless you. We bless revival. I walked into revival. I gave $33,000 every dime I had when I turned it loose. I didn't even give to get. I didn't give thinking, oh, I'm going to reap money. No, no, no. I gave saying, oh, God, I don't want money. I don't want homes. I don't want cars. Anybody know there's more to this thing than things and thrills and theories? Total abandonment, reckless abandonment, throwing caution to the wind. Jesus, I laid it all on the line. Five years later, drunk in the Holy Ghost, a quarter million dollar debt was completely gone. If you don't shout, I'm going to run the aisles tonight. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Give him a hand of praise. A quarter million dollar debt was completely gone. Came back with a quarter million dollars. Bought my property in, in Branson, Missouri. God has begun dealing with me and Deb for the past five years. We've been to hell and back. We have fought bull demons from the netherworld. But tonight, the long night is over. A new day has dawned. It's time for another level. Everybody say another level. Everybody say another level. Come on, take your gift and hold it up to God right now. Take your gift and hold it up to God. You're giving. You're sowing the Holy Ghost revival. You're going to help me go and sow seed in the greatest revival of the 20th century. Father God, I bless your people. We release increase. I cancel Satan's assignment against our finances. These people have stood with us for three months. Lord, it's taxing on a church when they have revival nonstop. But Father, it doesn't cost. It pays. This church is going to reap supernatural income. Tithers are coming. People are coming. Finances are coming back into the lighthouse. Come on, lift your hands and begin to praise him right now. Every need met, every bill paid, every debt canceled. I bind rebuke demons that are hindering finances. I release increase in Jesus' name. 
If you need supernatural financial abundance, lift your hands and praise him right now for 30 seconds. Come on, lift your hands and praise him for 30 seconds. The selling of property, the selling of homes, jobs, open doors, benefits. Jesus, checks in the mail that get to us. Estates are settled. I bind, rebuke every hindering force. And I claim financial abundance. Jump to your feet right now. Lift your hands and praise God. You're richer than a Rockefeller. You've got it all. You've got it all. Lift your hands and just shout praises to God for 30 seconds. Every need met, every bill paid, every debt canceled. Every need met, every bill paid, every debt canceled. In the mighty name of the mighty Jesus. In the mighty name of the mighty Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Blessings on Lighthouse. Blessings on Lighthouse. Come on, lift your hands and thank God for blessings on Lighthouse. Jesus. Blessings on your finances. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Jesus. 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 I'm telling you right now, folks. He is Lord. Everybody say, He is Lord. When you give this gift, you're laying it in a nail-scarred hand. Reach down and get the bucket there at the end of the seat. And right now, I want you to lay your gift in nail-scarred hands. God, you're Lord of my life. You're the Lord Jesus Christ. As you give it, you're going to help me go give a gift to Steve Hill. You're going to help me go bless the revival. You're going to help me go and say, this is from Barnstall. We stand with a man of God. We're also believing for another level here at this church. In Jesus' name, this church, this church is going to sow. This church is going to sow supernatural seed into the man of God, the woman of God that's been to hell and back. Bull demons have tried to destroy. Devil, you lose and we win. Come on, get your hands up and pray for Stephen Jerry Hill right now. Stephen Jerry Hill, we release you. We bless you. We set you free. We release you. We set you free. We release you. We set you free. We bless you. Ever need met, ever bill paid, ever debt cancel. Holy Ghost. Jesus. Jesus. Now, I want you to look at me tonight. I want everybody to look at me because, you see, a message like this, everybody say the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you put on the tape, Bill, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who he is. I thought that was just salutation. I thought it was benediction. No. Paul said 130 times his full title, Jesus Christ is Lord. He has risen from the dead, Jimmy, Brenda. He is risen. Everybody said he is risen. Lift your hands and say he is risen. Now, would you with me for the next month as we move into Christmas revival, would you just brag on him every service? Would you brag on him every service? I love the worship at this place. I love the worship. I love to see the team in full regalia. Sometimes I think they don't even know we're here. They're just worshiping him. God said, that's the way I want it to be. How many times do we perform before people and we try to put our best foot forward, at, but I watch the team as they just worship him, as they move around here on the platform. And a few moments ago, the glory got heavy. How many felt the heavy glory? Well, can you take some more of that? Okay, folks, it's not about my preaching. It's not about their singing. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm asking for Judgment Day honesty right now. Pastor paved the way this morning. He talked about instant obedience, complete obedience. And the Lord is someone you obey and worship. Obey and worship. Everybody say obey and worship. And I told you a few moments ago about a sister for seven years. Had something against her. It was her fault. Come on, shout amen. You know how it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, she, well, yeah, she did it to me. So, you know, God said, no, 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 no. You go to her. You know what I'm saying? You write the letter. Been there. Oh, yeah, done that. Bought the T-shirt. Come on, everybody shouting. Come on, you know what I'm saying? 
And all of a sudden, the, the closets were open, and the skeletons are out. God dealt with me about all my issues, grudges, animosity, family. Christmas is about family. I know you love God. He knows you love Him. When He's Lord of your life, He comes in your house. He opens up all the closets, cupboards, turns the lights on, cleans out the room. The stench is gone. Skeletons are gone. Begins to stoke the fire in the fireplace, Steve, Lana. And all of a sudden, it's a warm house. And John Davis is a dead man. I can tell you where I died and where he came alive in me. I'm not my own. Every week, I ask Pastor and Kathy, how are you doing? Because I'm here at their invitation. I know that. I'm not building me anything. I'm not trying to make anything happen. But all of a sudden, Branson, we may shut that down for a few months. I, I'm just praying about everything right now because something big, this way is a coming. Do you feel it? Do you sense it? Okay, folks. I'm asking for judgment day honesty. I'm going to ask you for a few moments to let God... Turn the light on in your house. Brothers, sisters, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, cousins, skeletons in the closet, little stash of pornography. My wife don't like me to tell that story. She said, John, why do you have to tell everything? She said, it's embarrassing when you talk about it. I said, well, baby, number one, I'm not running for superintendent. Come on, shout amen, somebody. I said, number two, God told me there's a whole lot of people just like me, and if I'll be honest, they'll be honest. I've seen thousands of people come clean and clear in altar calls because the preacher said, hey, I used to watch stuff I shouldn't watch. Are you listening to me? I said, number three, baby, Jesus set me free, and I'm so excited I want to see it happen every night. Come on, say amen, somebody. So I ain't trying to impress you. I'm just telling you John Davis was a mess. And I could quote chapters. They call me the walking Bible. The walking Bible's coming to town. Look at him. He quotes a book of the Bible. And I'd go back to motels and watch junk. I'd go back and wouldn't talk to a sister or a brother. What's that about? Skeletons. Everybody say skeletons. Now it's getting real quiet here at St. Mary's Catholic Church. Come on, say amen. So you know what I'm talking about. A while ago, you're shouting, but now you're just kind of looking at me like, you know, now what, how you know about me? I don't. He does. How many knows? He does. I'm asking for judgment day honesty. What if tonight, he says, as you move into Christmas revival, I want to come into your house. And he said, there's some basement rooms down there. And there's some closets. And there's some skeletons. And the blood will never cover what you don't uncover. And there's some stench. How many knows he can turn the aroma of heaven? I'm telling you, it can come into your home and the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys can smell throughout your house and people will be around you and they'll see Jesus in you. How many knows it's all about Jesus? The Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I want you to whisper Jesus three times. I'm asking for judgment day honesty. John Davis, there's some rooms in my house that God needs to invade tonight. And tonight... I'm going to give him the keys to these rooms. I want him to open the doors. I want him to open the cupboards. I want him to open the basement. I want him to open the closets. John Davis, there's some relationships. I can't touch it, but I know he can heal. Joyce Meyer said, God can fix anything. I believe that. That's simple yet so profound. God can fix anything. John Davis, there's some junk in my life, and I need God to clean the clutter out of my life, my addicts, my cellars. I need God to set me free. Turn the lights on. I need God to take control of my house. I want him to be the Lord Jesus Christ in my house. On the count of three, if I'm talking to you and there's some junk that God needs to take care of, on the count of three, you're going to raise your hand high because you want more than gifts. You want the giver. You want him to be the center of attention. You want Jesus to be Lord. On the count of three, John Davis, you're talking to me. There's junk in my house. I want God to take it out. On the count of three, you're going to raise your right hand. It may be relationships with sisters, brothers, nephews, nieces, mom, dad, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandchildren. I don't know. God does in the midst of it all. Stepchildren. It could be in-laws. I set you free on the count of three, John Davis. 
I need God to clean out my house. On the count of three, you're going to raise your right hand. One, two, three, raise it high. My God, what a night. What a night all over this building. All over this building, hands are going up. Now put your hand down, open your eyes. This, my friend, is a sign of revival. We've been together three months. And 90% of the people raised your hand. That's the sign of revival. That means you're moving to another level. Maybe three months ago you wouldn't acknowledge some of this stuff, but now you know it's real. If you lifted your hand on the count of three, get out of your seat and come and stand in front of me for my prayer. One, two, three. Come on, right now, hurry. Don't wait a second. Come and stand right here, side by side. Jesus. You're coming from the back and from the front all over this building. And grace, my fears, my fears relief. How precious did that grace the hour. Jesus. you've got family up here, I want you to come and stand with them. Come and stand behind them, beside them. Jesus. I want everybody up here to raise both of your hands and say these words. You're not talking to Pastor Barry, Pastor Kathy, Evangelist John Davis. You're talking to Father God. Say these words out loud, dear God. He hears that because he hears a whisper, but I want the devil to hear you. Say it louder, dear God. I'm sick of my sin. I'm sick of myself. I'm sick of Satan. I'm hungry for you, Jesus. Forgive me, Father, for all my sins, the bad I've done, the good I haven't done, wrong priorities, wrong motives, bad attitude, grudges, Bitterness, rebellion, gossip, backsliding, pride. I repent of my arrogance. I believe your word. I obey your word. I surrender all. I hold back nothing. Forgive me, Father, and set me free right now. According to your word, as I pray this prayer, all of my sins are under the blood, behind your back, in the sea, forgiven, forgotten, forever, right now. I'm your child, ready for heaven, ready for revival, ready to live, ready to die. I am ready. Satan, you hear me good in the name of Jesus. Get out of my head. Get out of my heart. Get out of my home. Right now, I'm free. I surrender all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now lift your hands and just begin to praise him. That's all he wants. That's all he wants. Just just submit. Just surrender. That's all he wants right here. You can't do it. He does it, but he wants you to open the door. If you open the door, I'll come in. Come and say, just praise him. Now, we're coming to lay hands on you. When we touch you, the power of God is going to hit you again. He's touched you every night that you've been here for three months. It's going to get greater and stronger and more powerful. Right now, I set you free, and I cancel hell's assignment against your life. I bind rebuke demons out of your head, your heart, your home. I release you to move into your destiny. God's going to heal your hurt, your relationships. Every area of your life is submitted to the blood of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of your life. Say these words. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. 
Now lift your hands and don't let them down. We're coming to pray for you right now. Open your mouth and praise him. Open your mouth and praise him.